In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue to hear from John chapter 10, and Jesus the Good Shepherd, and sometimes we see how good he is when we realize how bad we are as shepherds. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, perfect light of the blessed, by whose gift we celebrate the Paschal mysteries on earth, Bring us, we pray, to rejoice in the full measure of your grace for ages unending. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles, too, had accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers confronted him, saying, You entered the house of uncircumcised people and ate with them. Peter began and explained it to them step by step, saying, I was at prayer in the city of Joppa, when in a trance I had a vision, something resembling a large sheet coming down, lowered from the sky by its four corners, and it came to me. Looking intently into it, I observed and saw the four-legged animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter, and eat. But I said, certainly not, sir, because nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, a voice from heaven answered, what God has made clean, you are not to call profane. This happened three times, and then everything was drawn up again into the sky. Just then three men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also sent, went with me, and we entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house saying, send someone to Joppa and summon Simon, who is called Peter who will speak words to you, by which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as it had upon us in the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, and you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift he gave to us when we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God has then granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles, too. The word of the Lord. A thirst is my soul for the living God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. 
As the hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of the Lord? A thirst is my soul for the living God. Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, they did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. A priest friend of mine has a surprising, even scandalous, argument for the fact that the Catholic Church was established by Christ. Believe it or not, he points to the period of the Renaissance popes for proof of the divine nature of the Catholic Church. Such an argument should shock you. Why? Because that was the worst period for the papacy. But for my friend, that is exactly how it highlights the holiness of the church. How so? Well, the period of the papacy, about 150 years, from about 1417 to 1559, was fraught with utter depravity and decadence. For example, some popes even had mistresses and illegitimate children whom they promoted to positions of power. Do you know where the word nepotism comes from? It is based on the Latin word nepos, meaning nephew. Some of the Renaissance popes like Callistus III and Alexander VI elevated their nephews as cardinals they were called cardinal nephews. And that is where the reprehensible practice of nepotism originated in the Catholic Church. 
Not surprisingly then, not one of the 19 Renaissance popes was ever canonized or his cause even considered. And yet, for my friend, this period was proof positive that God had established the church. Why? Simple. Because if the church had been merely a human institution, it should have collapsed under the weight of all that sin and scandal and selfishness. But the fact that the church endured and even expanded in the aftermath shows that the Holy Spirit had not abandoned the bark of Peter. Jesus promised Peter and his successors in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, and so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it, and nor will the Renaissance popes prevail against it. In other words, the Catholic Church belongs to Christ, not to any pope or any priest, however revered or rotten they may be. By the way, it was very hard for me personally to say all this in public. I only say it to highlight our humanity and by contrast, Christ's divinity and his desire to protect and preserve his bride, the church. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, Jesus demonstrates how he is the good shepherd by contrast to those who are evil shepherds. Sometimes you can prove your point by emphasizing the negative, the opposite, like nepotism. Jesus declares, all who came before me are thieves and robbers. He goes on. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Now John insists that Jesus intended those words for the Pharisees. But in a broader sense, Jesus meant it for all the shepherds who put themselves before the sheep, such as the Renaissance popes. The faults and the failings of church leaders are not a call to abandon the church, but rather to see the good shepherd who never abandons his bride. And it is in him alone that we put our faith, hope, and love. Catholics may give up on the church and stop going to mass when they see the failures of their leaders, but Christ never does. Indeed, as St. Paul writes, Christ loved the church as his wife and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath and of water and the word. Our failures highlight his fidelity. My friends, I hope you hear this message this morning as good news, not only for the universal church, but also for the domestic church of your own family. Why? Well, what do children eventually see as they grow up in their own families, the domestic church, the faults and failures of their parents? And so children often swear, I'm not going to be like my parents my mom and dad, when I father my own family, I'll do things right. But what happens? We end up making the same or worse mistakes than they did. Sometimes we feel the temptation to give up on our parents because we see their sins and their scandals. But that can also be a call to see Christ's presence in our domestic church as the Good Shepherd. Our failures shine a bright light on Christ's fidelity. 
Jesus' words in John chapter 10 are not only directed to the Pharisees and to the Renaissance popes, but also to me and to you. Do not be discouraged by your sins and struggles, your faults and your failures. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. As it says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, and you and I are the same yesterday, today, and forever, too. Our failures highlight His fidelity. Praise to be Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. Recognizing our own weaknesses and our need for the Lord, we present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the church, for our Holy Father Francis, for our bishops, our priests, those who have been called to be shepherds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our own leaders, that they would shepherd their sheep with goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who question and doubt and have left the Catholic Church, that our scandals may help them see Christ's fidelity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all the needs we mention in silence. Praying in this Mass, especially for the repose of the soul of Jean Bruick, for Audosia Bruno, who is sick, and for Dot Hosford, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We come before you, Christ, the Good Shepherd, and we lay before you our faults and failures, knowing that you are always faithful. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, especially Jean. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our failure highlights his fidelity, and so we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.